Now, live looping is something I see a lot of performers do on stage with Ableton Live, but it's also something that we can use in the studio to enhance our workflow. And um, what we're going to do here is let's sort of review what most producers do when they record something, uh, particularly in live here, we're going to be recording into session view. So let's see what most producers do when they record into session view. And what that is, is they'll record something in, and then often the inclination is just to hit the space bar. And what that does is it stops everything. And it kind of takes you out of the flow of the music. And even though it could just be a second or two, that second or two is sometimes enough to maybe look over and realize you got a text on your phone or uh, see that little email notification pop up in the corner of your computer screen. Any number of little things can happen that can prevent you from staying focused on your music and distracting you from your music, even if it's just for a second or two. And the goal here with this one is just to keep the flow of the music going so you can just add new parts. And this is especially helpful early on in your track when you're coming up with all of your different parts. So what I'm going to do here is demonstrate the technique. Now, the technique involves, we're going to do it with a MIDI track for this, uh, for this video, but I'm going to make sure my MIDI track is record armed. I have a bass sound from this MIDI track. Let's go down in octaves or more in the bass register. I also have a drum sound, that's just a drum loop, that we will use to play along to. Now, it's going to involve recording using the either the round record buttons that show up on a record armed MIDI track or audio track. Or the other thing we could do is use this session record button up here. So let's play the drums. Let's record in a bass part. And uh, we'll record in the bass part and then do the space bar thing. And let's just see how that takes us out of the flow. Two, one, two, three, four. space bar, everything stops, and uh, okay, what do I do next with myself? I probably go down here and fix the MIDI notes, whatever. Oh, by the way, this is another kind of bonus hack here. I'm using this function called record quantization under the edit menu and the context menu. Record quantization, I have mine on and set to 16th notes. I just have this on by default all the time. I think it's helpful to have, so I would recommend it to you as well. Choose whatever note quantization works for you. 16th note tends to work for me. But anyway, you can see my notes are all quantized, but I got an extra bar here and I got to go in and I got to fix the clip and I got to make sure it plays right with my drums. There's a lot of things, little chores I got to do to just continue working and add the next part into my song. So instead of doing the space bar thing, let's try this session record thing. So um, we'll play the drums back. I'm going to click the record button on this empty clip slot again to engage my recording. Two, three, four. But that time, I just clicked the session record button. I came up with a couple of different variations there. I'm going to stop this. I have everything record, quant I'm sorry, all the notes are record quantized, as you can see. But I want you to notice something here. Not only are the notes quantized, but without having to hit spacebar and stop everything, you can see that my clip is perfectly quantized to six bars. Now, the reason for this is that my global quantization setting is set to one bar. And when I click the session record button in the middle of my playing, it recognized what my global quantization setting is and it said, okay, well at the end of this bar that you're playing in right now, I'll stop the recording, quantize it perfectly, and then I'll just start looping it back for you. And that's exactly what it did. Now six bars is a little bit of an odd uh, piece of musical timing for a bass line. I could use it, but odds are what I would do next is maybe find a couple of bars of this, maybe two bars in the middle or something that worked. And then I could just loop it from there. And again, I can do this all while it's playing. I can also move the loop brace around, etc. But now with the music continuing to go, I can maybe add a new MIDI track. Let's find another instrument. What do we have in the pad department here? I like this snow pad sound. Bring the keyboard up by an octave. Okay, and that could be a cool part to add in. So, let's use our empty clip slot here. We'll use the record button to record something in. One, two, three, four. And 
Now I'm just going to click the playhead again on that clip. We can see quantize clip length of four bars, ideas looping back instantaneously. And the last thing I should mention here is this works with audio clips as well. So if you're recording audio from a, a synthesizer, a keyboard, a guitar, vocals, anything like that. So again, this is a great tip for live performance, a great little hack to, you know, build up ideas on the fly, but it's also really good for studio work to keep your workflow going and prevent yourself from getting distracted by all of the little things that can easily distract us. We're sitting in front of our computers, connected to the internet, the world is at our fingertips. Let's just focus on making music for this little bit of time that we have to do it. So hopefully that helps. Again, this is kind of a simple technique, I know, but it's very frequently overlooked by a lot of producers and students I've worked with in the past. So incorporate this into your workflow and you'll be surprised at how quickly you can start coming up with your musical ideas. Hope that helps.